kind of norm. So it's a much richer structure, which um, still, with many questions, is not fully understood. So, uh, and these guys, um, they are the ones who actually read the paper after so many years, the only one who read it. And uh, they were working on this uh, lower range here. And they have very nice results about uh, so-called linear graph containment, those graphs with hyper edges with small intersections like simple graphs. So um, I, I, I will just make a, a, a few more remarks before the lunch. So I've been working on sparse graphs and very a lot of problems about identified community, how you move from one social network to another. So I was looking at so-called positive rank two, so and just have a draft of this paper. So basically, back to two graphs, the following two are equivalent. In fact, there are a couple more properties, but at this point, I think you already got the idea. I'm not going to bore you with more properties. So basically, the eigenvalue have two positive eigenvalues, and the rest are all like noises, okay? And in that case, I can partition the edges into two parts, and each of them is quasi-random. Really, quasi-random is of rank one, approximate rank one, positive rank one. I, I, I put positive here to distinguish from the bipartite case, which has a somewhat artificial ring to it. So, but anyway, um, one direction is very easy. If, if you overlap two quasi-random, you go there. The other direction is, is, uh, is the part you have to work. <laughs> and uh, I got my, some of my students to struggle with messier, bigger cases. Um, okay, I think um, I sort of cover a number of topics, but I want to say a little bit about um, all the unfinished business, which is actually a lot. <laughs> so we have a quasi-random class, very strong for two graphs for usual graphs. So it's uh, very rich, it has all these properties we put in, and every time you put in one more, it's stronger because you can use any one of them for your purpose, right? So that's the quasi-random graphs that we talked about a bit. And we also briefly mentioned the expander graphs. Then of course here, you know, for expansions, there's really it matters how much you expand the quantitative part. Uh, from the one side, you really almost have four expansion versus the other side, you almost just want to make sure you have one edge leaving so you can have a matching. So that's the sort of concentrator. So that's, in a way, um, actually quite a bit different. Quite a, in early days of using concentrator, we only beg to expand a little bit. Just that a little bit allows us to do the concentrator and super concentrators. So here it really takes a bigger classification there versus the other direction, which we really know really very, very little because we know all random graphs. That's how random, Ramsey theory, Ramsey numbers is proved because all random graphs should have very small cliques or anti cliques, right? And they like off size log in. So we're sort of hoping that the, this Ramsey property is a very, probably older, much older than all these. People make such tremendous progress with all the beautiful applications in expander graphs. Uh, for Ramsey graphs, really, you are looking at finer patterns. And uh, it's somehow a harder topic, at least to me, uh, to see all those properties, how it's related. So um, 
you can see not as much progress was there. There was a, a couple of papers, but I'm, I still believe uh, uh, there was even, you know, the whole explicit construction of Ramsey graphs and stuff. It's very, very far from what we really uh, hope to capture from random graphs. Then, um, of course, um, for sparse graphs, you don't even have to go to very fancy stuff. Just uh, see uh, when, if you are working on integers, then you know sparse is hard. Once you go down just even a little bit, so one way to uh, fight with that is to really go very very sparse like the real graphs are. In real, for real graphs, sparse means linear. So constant n. And the constant is not even very big, like no more than 10. So I think this, for the sparse, somehow um, not as much work on it and really can use a lot more. And it's really close to, uh, I. I, I, I don't really want to emphasize real graphs, but the, 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 uh, the story is really in real graphs, it really gives you good uh, examples and guidelines in what to perceive. And that is why there is hope, because all these real graphs, uh, they are amazingly coherent with amazing properties, sort of pushing you uh, sort of finally on the, good side of uh, the mother nature that you see these real examples try to guide you. And of course, uh, quasi-random hypergraph lattices, which um, I just, uh, the ink is not even dry there, so it's a lot more uh, can be said, should, could be said. So uh, with that, I think, um, I'm actually ahead. See, there's many threads to follow. My students make nice new pictures for me. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Could you? Okay, so I, if, as I understand Ben's question is about what are those uh, Conlon, Han, Schacht do um, for quasi-random. So what they prove, they actually throw in a couple more properties for this lower range, the discrepancy, sort of away from the de deviation. They are not looking at the usual octahedron. The, the kind of uh, they, the, the graph counting uh, theorem they have is to count only graphs with a restriction, which is that the intersection is at most one, or the edges intersection is at most one. So for that family of graphs, they link it to quasi-random, um, which is what I call a discrepancy two but it's for k graphs. So, so now we have this lattice, like counting the four octahedron is at the top, various size octahedron. At, at the bottom, it was counting um, these uh, graphs with very strict intersection properties. And in the middle, you can see this whole lattice. You can relax your intersection restriction then you have this whole lattice of quasi-random uh, classes, quasi-random classes, equivalence classes. I, I know that uh, it's hard to say because, in fact, uh, everything involved hypergraph, the notation will get, it's hard to, it, I, I am trying to put it in the simplest terms. Uh, 
anyway, uh, you can easily find the paper. Any further questions or comments? Yes. Yes. Is there a natural way of extending to infinite uh, graphs? Uh, is the corresponding class stable under Guam of Alpha? I, I haven't worked on that, but um, the, the formulation, see, usually when you do sequences, you do go to infinity. <laughs> but uh, one way to go to infinity is you have these finite ones and take diagonal, then you definitely go to infinity. But um, I mostly work in the finite framework, which I find it particularly appealing. Go ahead. Uh, like what? Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, I think uh, in all my, the example is a big part of this. <laughs> um, we have a couple examples, but try to stick into more. In fact, a very good source of examples is still the Thomason paper. He has really very nice set of examples. More questions or comments? So let's thank Frank Jones. <laughs> Avi has 